identifying recording for August 12, 2018. This is Yalak. My lesson is titled North and South America. And I'm looking at some history here. And uh, I'm just trying to see what happened in the past, as usually when you study, you have more interest into that. And I just want to dig into history some more for myself, as I neglected for many, many years. And I'm being shocked by the things I'm starting to learn. And so I've got this book that I've already begun to do some lessons from. I've got one lesson recording, recorded already, not yet edited and posted online at the time of this recording here, um, from this book, and I'm going to continue again with this other lesson from this book by American historian Henry Howard Brownell, The New World. He's talking about North and South America, and on page 17, he mentioned that before the coming of the Europeans, there were ancient races who for, as he put it, immemorial ages were hidden away from history. Although two great semi-civilized empires of Mexico and Peru were emphasized. And if it says here immemorial, that means we can't really put a date on it. And what I'm starting to think lately is that all this talk about Earth or man is 6,000 years old or 10,000. And some people say a million or 50 million years old and so on. They're trying to date the Sphinx. They're trying to date pyramids. All kinds of different numbers get jumbled around and... Uh, People say you can't prove this, you can't prove that. Scientists says this and what. And then you got the religious voices that are saying this and that. I'm starting to think now that maybe there's all this kind of fight because somebody knows and they just don't want you to know the truth. But maybe it's just more that we don't really know the truth. Like how can you really tell when the first man was? Maybe things are just so ancient that we don't really know. And if they're telling you right here, in the case of what he's talking about here, North and South America, he says immemorial ages. So even just here in the Americas, they don't really know when these people started. And so you can think of that with the rest of the world as well. Like They don't really know where we came from. And I've been thinking about this lately with with the creation of man. And when the scripture says uh, he made man in his image, he made him out of the dust of the ground, nobody was there to see and to witness that. And so when it says he made man in his image, that means that man has to look like God. And I wondered why no theologian on earth has, that I've heard from or read from has ever, no teacher has ever been able to explain to you just what that image is. None. You can say all kinds of different things because you don't really know. And so when you look at he made man in his image, maybe it's just a way to say that If man is made in the creator's image, that means that the creator looks like man. Now, if the creator looks like man, you still have a problem there because what's he doing like man? Because they already cultured us from children with the Bible to think that God is a spirit and he doesn't really have any, any like default shape or form. So how can he just you know, look like man normally as some base form that he has. So maybe in the image of God, it's trying to let you know the creator has to look 
like man, based on that written word that he, he made man in his image. And then if it says male and female, that means he has to look like woman as well. So where is the gender? How's the gender part going to be figured out? But then it would also mean that the reverse is true, that man also looks like the creator. But if man has a basic form that he cannot get away from, like he's not going to look like a stone, for example. He's just always going to look like man. So how can the creator be also limited to that form? The form of a man. I'm thinking lately that the reason why it was placed like that is just to say something that they cannot prove, which again lets me think that the creator did not inspire this book. Man wrote this book. Because since man has never seen God, but has seen man, he can only describe God as man. And if I stretch it further, that's why you see all these personifications in the Bible and all these anthropomorphisms and so on, and these analogies and so on, when dealing with God and man in the creation, so that God is made at times to look like man, and God is sometimes look, uh, made to look like his you know, other parts of creation. Like he can be described as a cloud that is right here and moves, or the wind that's blowing right here and then moves away and blows away fast to show that you can't tie him down and so on. So they don't really know this God. They're just saying it. Maybe it is that man actually is God or is the expression of God in that there's a concentrated um, expression of God in the flesh or the body of man or in the whole body spirit makeup of man which still does not deny quote unquote God or the creator from being outside of the man as well because that's probably just the best that they could come up with and that's the way the best I can come up with it so then if you say that God is eternal and eternal is not even a word that's heavily used in the scriptures. And I found that shocking when I took a look at eternity or eternal. But maybe God is actually man. And so they don't really know when God came about. Which is a way to let you know as well, they don't really know when man started, when he came about. So, man just is. That's why they tell you 6,000 years and then they get a lot of people saying we've been here for millions and millions and millions of years. And they usually add on millions and millions and millions and millions and. Because they can't stop saying millions. They, they don't know when. And the trick on earth in religious matters and history of earth is to try to tie you down lock you down to a certain age like they've done here at least in the west tell you six thousand years ago to kind of limit you but if you go over in the east you'll hear millions and millions and some even say billions and some just straight out say we don't really have any beginning like i'm saying here actually i, ju I just came up with that I, I don't think i've read any one that said well yeah yeah i think i've seen a few people saying we don't really have and they start, but maybe that's it. So if we don't really have any start, then to say in Genesis that he formed man out of the dust of the ground is just a way to say something that the Creator never said. But if man is God, then in a sense God is saying it because the man is writing it, saying it and writing it down from what he came into his mind from the most ancient of days. When people are like, where did we come from and where are we going? Who or what are we and what is our purpose? So, if God then is man, I can understand then how man can be seen as being eternal because we're just, we've just always been here. As far back as we can remember, we just are. 
We just are. And the reason why kings and governments from now and from ancient times are able to do all kinds of religious deception and all kinds of wickedness and killing people and so on, and, and lie to the public and so on, and, and take your land and do all kinds of things like that, is because they know the truth that no matter what the Torah says or your next holy book says, there really is no such God as the God of Yahweh or one of these Baal type gods and so on that can do anything about it as a physical being. Because tell me, if there is a man like this Jesus God, this Mashiach, that is a real physical God, and no other man is greater than him, how can he allow all these things to go on on earth and people to do these mass wickedness and fight wars and slaughter a whole people who never did anything to them and just take their land and so on? And rape the women and take the children and so on and kill the men and then enslave anybody else who might have been left in the area. It's because there is no such God overseeing stuff. If you are running an international um, conglomeration, like some real, real big um, international company, and you're making billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars per year, and all of a sudden somebody just look at it and sees an opportunity to make some money off this and... You know, you know, he's in charge because you put him in charge and he starts to steal your money and do things to the company in a couple of the, the branches worldwide and just starts running your company down because by doing it that certain way, he can make many millions of dollars off you. You're just going to just watch all this losses all this loss build up over many years and never do anything about it. Your accountants and everybody else is telling you something is wrong. These figures don't add up and something has gone wrong with the marketing and with the design of the products and so on or whatever. Something is fishy and you never investigate that. And then when you finally come around to hearing about it and you know exactly who's doing it, the same way this quote unquote God or God man or Yahweh will hear about it and does nothing to all these kings doing stuff on the earth. Until now, they can even now move past just the regular daggers and swords from ancient times. And now they're making high-powered nuclear bombs to just kill masses in a flash. And he doesn't do anything about it. The same way this owner that started this company from he was just like a teenager and grew it up through many hardships and lots of work and whatever, lost his family in the process, lost his wife in the process because he's a workaholic and whatever. And he sees now and finds and comes to the understanding from other faithful people in the company supporting him well, that they've identified the couple of people who are doing this stuff on the head, the ringleader guy. And he doesn't do anything. He just lets you continue to waste the resources and waste your money and use your money that he's stealing from under your nose to further his theft in the company and you just suffer the losses. He's destroying your name, he's destroying your credibility, he's destroying your worldwide image, he's destroying your company. And you still have to go on paying your taxes even though you are losing so much. You're going to run yourself broke. So God sees man destroying the earth, this Yahweh, a single being Yahweh, or this Mashiach. Destroying the earth, destroying the trees, destroying people's bodies, destroying the very grass on the ground, destroying the fruits, destroying the animals, destroying the, the, the oceans, the quality of the water and the air and so on. And he doesn't do anything. You see, I'm led to think now that it's because such a being does not actually exist. But if God is man, then he is spirited by this, this essence or whatever we would call spirit that we normally think is God, is powering man. And maybe the world will only go better when we decide to stand up for truth and for a better way to live on earth. And we use that which empowers us inside this unseen force or entity or spirit, or whatever it is, And we use that to, to empower us to move towards and supporting things that are right and good and pure on the earth. 
which would then regenerate life, bring life back. It will emphasize truth. It will stand up and fight for truth and push truth through until earth is restored once again, until we can live longer again and so on. And until, you know, we, we push for better food that's not contaminated with drugs and so on and poisons and whatever and the poisoning of the water stopped and so on when we do that the god that we are gets to take over because god is in all of us and is in the earth itself meaning like it's outside of us and so it is there because it created everything right and we just appeared with the same God force inside of us at a time when we can't count because nobody knows when the first person was. So then man is. That's why the same Torah says generations come and go, but the earth remains. So it's just going to keep going. It's just going to keep going. That's why no matter how many people they say they're going to kill, there's still a lot of people left to kill. Or rather, a lot of people left to go on living. Because it's not that easy. Right? To just do anything you want fully. And so you get the whole good and evil. Because if man is God, then the evil people who have run the earth from ancient times and until today know that you're an idiot because you believe all the religious teachings around you that we made sure continues to be propped up so you will believe it so that your mind isn't free to think and accept what is naturally coming to you as truth, that you are God. And when you as God stand up and push for the things that you want, as tough as it is, as hard as it is, as it is, as dangerous as it might be, and as many threats as it brings to you, if you and the next person and the next person and the next person continue to stand up like that and push for truth and try to restore the truth of the past in the world, then eventually you're going to find that one day standing up for truth becomes easier. You're scared now. Because when you stand up, nobody stands with you too tough, so you feel more afraid. But when many of you stand up, then strength increases. And so, in a sense, God is not one man or one being up in the air like some Baal type God or some monkey God or some Thor or some sky God or some Yahweh and so on, or some Mashiach. God is not this one single person, but God is many persons. God is all of us working together to preserve life, to preserve purity on earth, and to preserve earth that we live on. So we don't really know how it all started, because we don't know what the real source or ethereal force and source is that powers us that made us and make us continue to be. That force or source just made us at a time when no time was being counted, so they don't really know when we came to be, we just are. In that sense, one might say that man is eternal. And if man is eternal, and we're always taught that God is the only eternal one on earth, that means man is the God that is eternal. And so now, when you look now, after I get it, come out back out of my little theological ramblings and considerations there, if we come back to the book here now, the New World, Volumes 1 and 2, North and South America, that I'm talking about here, when he says here, these ancient races that were there in North and South America before the coming of the Europeans, they were of immemorial ages. That means you don't really know when these people started. But it's kind of interesting too that he says the coming of the Europeans. So why do the Europeans have to come? 
right here. It doesn't mean that they weren't here before. It doesn't mean that they weren't here before. In North and South America. Now, I don't know European history, so I don't know where else they come from. I started studying European history about a year and a half ago, and I stopped because I wanted to study some other stuff. So one day I'll pick it up, but we hear that Europeans in general come from Europe, it's a very cold, icy place. Then you hear another point, well, they really come out of Africa because everybody come out of Africa. And all this stuff like, you know, I don't know. A lot of great studying have been done out there and presentations of stuff that are very, very convincing. And I'm leaning now towards that we came out of Africa as well. But I'm changing very fast. And so I'm still open to anything else that might come out. I mean, did we start here in North America and head over to Africa? I don't know. But so far, I think the whole Africa stuff might be where it's at. But I still leave myself open because I realize that after the the childhood deception of Christianity and biblical things from an Abrahamic type teaching up until now that I've lived under the spell of and now to find out that the creator didn't write the Bible or the Torah and so on now I know anything can be changed and you just have to go day by day whatever you can uncover you do so and you share your stuff and leave it to the next people to find out and use it to help them to find out other stuff and so on. Until one day earth just comes back to, to truth. So I continue to investigate all kinds of stuff. Now the, the coming of the Europeans found these races here who were from immemorial ages. And they were hidden away from history. Although two great semi-civilized semi empires of Mexico and Peru were emphasized. Goes on to say, these ancient races are so old that modern man cannot put a proper date on them and their information has been hidden. And what that means to me this morning is that the information has been hidden um, partly because they probably just weren't writing the way we are writing books today. They weren't publishing books. They just had their traditions and stories and their carvings and so on. And they taught each other. As new children grew up and so on, they learned in their tribes and their, you know, but also hidden because whatever was learned from them was not documented to be made available to the public in general. Some information is just given to the upper ones, the elites, and uh, which would more be like the elites of deception and the elites of hiddenness, hiding information. And in some cases, some stuff just wasn't even probably bothered to be written down. Because the moment you write stuff, one day it might get out. So the information about them was hidden so that it's difficult to find stuff. Whatever books might have been written hundreds of years ago are just locked away, hidden away, and some destroyed, outlawed, and so on. But what cannot be denied is that these people were here. These ancient nations died and made no sign. And from my digging of the past now, they didn't just die quietly like that, but quiet more means to me, at this level of searching, that they were just slaughtered, they were killed off, and information wasn't circularized about the massacre, about the destruction. So that maybe a lot of the massacre that we've heard of in more recent times with the taking of land and so on and killing of indigenous or autochthonous people is more more recent information but the earlier killing and slaying of these people was just probably not documented or not heavily documented so that it can be said that they just died quietly silently so that there might have been a wave of killing and removal of these people from their lands before a more recent doing of the same because i noted that even with the whole columbus stuff the reason why columbus voyage to america and even on the islands was popularized to us and now i'm seeing it's that it's a way to let us know that we should focus on the coming of the europeans with columbus when they already came 
hundreds of years before that and obviously began to slaughter and kill these original or aboriginal people before Columbus. So that you will just start your history in the 15th century or so and not realize that it happened also a long time before that. So that with Columbus, that's just the tail end of it that's coming up to more recent times. As I've even searched here in Canada where I'm at and in Jamaica, and I couldn't really find anything, especially Canada. And now only a little bit of breakthrough, I'm finding certain stuff, but it's hard to find at my level because I don't know how to study very well and research information yet. I probably need 10 more years of experience in how to search and dig for stuff. Um, but even so, the little I found lets me know, okay, so there was a past that was hidden away from America, Canada, even down in the islands, hidden away and covered up by this whole Columbus smokescreen to let you know Columbus is what you should focus on. When Europeans came long before Columbus and was destroying the the original people who are described as swarthy or black, you know, not getting technical with the word black, or they say black means white and white is black and all that, but just a regular Negro that you would see and you would say that's a black person. So they found that black person in the Americas hundreds of years before Columbus. Long, long time ago. So in any case though, it's saying that these people died silently, but we know it wasn't like that. They they didn't just die off silently. Like you you are living very well for thousands of years and in a couple of years, you just you just fall silently to the ground like it's some cartoon, and you just silently just drop into the ground and you're falling asleep and you just die. And all of your civilization, all of the people in your nation or in your tribes, just start dying one after the other. And the people in the next tribe, seeing you just die, you go to sleep last night, and in the morning when they wake up, you and everyone in your tribe just silently died in your sleep. And then tonight they die in their sleep and the next night the other tribes and so on die. And the whole land of people just die in their tribes one by one silently every night. And nobody of these ancient people who were so wise enough to have survived through the elements and the animals that are attacking them and so on for thousands or probably millions of years, they just one by one watch every nation or every tribe just die silently night after night and they never go and investigate it and try to see if they can help and stop it or they never say wait we don't know what's causing it but people are our neighbors are just dying silently obviously we're the next one beside the last tribe that died so we might die tonight and they never just get up and say you know what let's just move to the other side of the country or let's just move to the other side of the world they don't they just lay down and just all silently die and you're telling me that we should just buy that and all of a sudden Afterwards, you see some history of the coming of the Europeans, and you don't connect the two. It's very odd. But to go on here, it says they just simply disappeared from history. Not much documented information was left by these nations, but their presence can be verified by evidence found about their presence in the Western world prior to the Europeans. And you remember Ivan, Dr. Ivan Van Sertema, they came before Columbus. Right. So I don't know at what point, I guess some people will say that we were always here. But then the out of Africa stuff said that we came here a long time ago. Both of them seem fine to me. Uh, I think they, I like the out of Africa one more. But like I said, I'm still open to whatever new information or more searching as I do it. But I guess more reading and studying needs to be done by me. Now, if I look in the same book here at page 18, and notice as well, too, that these people, which is another lesson I have to do, they were found, when the Europeans came, they were found living in forests. And this whole North America, as far as I've seen, was like a forest place before, like they've chopped down a lot of the trees now and built up all this stuff. But it was like they're living in forests. And... Um, they were just content. 
you call them backward and so on and and primitive people they were just content they 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 were just living they were people of the earth they were people of the earth and they were content they built their stuff to live in their places to live in and so on but they they built it in a way where they could still preserve as much of nature as possible around them, cutting down only enough trees that they needed to build their houses so that after they built it, they were still surrounded by a lot of nature. They respected the earth. This would be like what you would call the original Indian until we know they changed it up later and now you got these modern looking Indians that are different looking from the original people who were swarthy. But in page 18, he's saying that they popularized the voyage of Columbus, which I just told you about, right? So that you won't be aware that there was a history before that. Now, if they were there for North and South America, you know they would have gone all over everywhere. Because you can't be here for many thousands or millions of years and just not spread and move around the land. So you know they had to have been taken down, eradicated, like removed from the land. And then another people set up and it's shown that these people were never here. It's like everybody else just seems to be the the indigenous or the, the original. And you don't know what black people, where are they from? Is They're not really from anywhere. So you know there must be a lie. Because how can so-called black people not be from anywhere? It's because that's just a history being told. The people were taken over and conquered. And you can't say that they're from here anymore. So you say they're not from here. Yet still you say you're taking them over from somewhere. So here now, he says here, going from page 17 to 18, talking about the European discoveries of the discoverers of the American continent. Um that arrival for several centuries strangely ignored by the historical world, strangely ignored, was much earlier than has been commonly supposed. See that? That's why I say they want you to suppose that the Columbus event was where it started. But he's saying, no, the earlier history of Europeans coming and finding black peoples peopling the Americas was just strangely ignored because they came before Columbus and found a lot of us here, and you hear that people came from Africa, Africans, long, long time ago, way before Columbus. So if Europeans are coming now, that means that they're finding these African people, peopling all the Americas and the islands and so on. So it's strangely ignored, right? And then he goes on to say, by manuscripts of unquestioned authenticity, by the most perfect consistence and coincidence of details and by a host of corroborative facts it has been made evident that the american continent five centuries before the memorable voyage of columbus was discovered and frequently visited by men of european race without delaying to cite authorities or adduce evidence on a matter so fully elucidated by others, we shall proceed briefly to present the facts as accepted by the most exact and scrupulous antiquarians of our day. 900 years ago, right? And when he says 900 years ago, his book here is, what I'm reading from, is from 1856, right? So you're talking 900 years ago, you're looking at somewhere around 1,000 years ago from where we're at right now somewhere around the town right so it's saying from way back in that time the mariners of scandinavian peninsula were the most daring skillful and successful of their age their voyages distinguished by a strange mixture of commerce piracy and discovery added no little to the geographical knowledge of their day and he went on to say in 861 they discovered Ireland and so on or whatever. Then eventually coming over to the coming over to everywhere that you see them now in the Americas. 
Then he goes on here on page 19. And he's saying, after I've skipped out a lot of other stuff he's saying, it's saying that the first land seen, judging from the description, um, but let's read the sentence before that. Actually, let me just read this paragraph and just close it out here. From the internal evidence afforded by the dates and the courses of this remarkable voyage, as well as from the corroboration of subsequent expeditions, it would appear that these tempest-driven mariners, long scudding before a northeast gale, yet heading to the westward as much as possible, finally brought up somewhere on the shores of New England. The first land seen, judging from the descriptions, was probably Nanticket or Cape Cod. Two days sailing would easily bring them to the level and forest-covered shores of Nova Scotia. And there, so you're talking about Canada, and I've been down there before too, Nova Scotia, and I looked at the waters and so on, coming up to the land and some of the history that's down there. But at a time when I never cared about any of this kind of history, I was still in the Christian church and I never cared about searching out history. But Nova Scotia and there and three more to the bleak and precipitous coast of Newfoundland or Newfoundland, if some pronounce it that way. From that island to the southern extremity of Greenland, the distance is but 600 miles, which a vessel running before a favorable gale might readily accomplish within the given time. To no other region of coast in the vicinity of Greenland will the dates and descriptions so accurately apply, and little doubt can exist that America, by this accidental voyage, so accidental while the blacks were already living here, these black Nuban looking type people, so by this accidental voyage was first laid open to men of European race. So when you see you know, and of course, this is just me studying out history. So, anybody wants to get offended, I mean, I can't help it. This is just a book that other white people are writing. And obviously giving it out to the public. And I always wonder why they write this stuff. Like, if you're European, why are you sharing this knowledge? Like, don't you want to hide this stuff? But it seems like there are different kinds of white people where... Some want to hide stuff that happened and others just don't, they don't hide it. Like, it's like they just want to put it out there. And so we get some of these books. And um, so little doubt exists that America was found by them by an accidental voyage. And it goes on to show in the book, as I'm going to get into more and more, that they found black people living here. When they came by an accidental voyage and then they went on to continue to um, explore and so on and they saw the fruit trees and so on and they were eating the fruit of the land and, and so on and that now takes me back in closing to something that I'm working on I should do a lesson on it about Eden Excuse me, and it's just something I'm wondering how it ties in, but Eden, to the land of the Americas, they seem to have some kind of Edenic structure to it. Not saying that this is the land of Eden, I'm just saying it has. It brings my mind back because while I can't connect the land necessarily to being Eden, but I can connect the people to being an Edenic kind of people. So when it says he made the man and then he made a male and female in his image and he placed them in the garden. It's kind of like he made, it's like a forest kind of area that is the garden. And he placed them in the garden that was eastward in Eden. And if you look at east as the land, of Eden, excuse me, as the land, then Eden can also be, you know, eastward in Eden can mean a direction but if you look at the word for Eden, it can also point to longevity, something very, very ancient. So it's like he placed him eastward in Eden, 
or eastward in the land. In other words, he placed the man from ancient times in the land or these people that Europeans are found, have found now in recent times in the Americas, it's like this man that they have found were placed from antiquity or from very old or ancient times in the land. So ancient that there was nobody there before them placed in the land. Nobody was in the land before them. And they were placed in this garden or this forest type area. And when they came, they found these black people in living basically in forests. A lot of trees that have been cut down now to build up all these structures and so on that we see now. But they were living in a forest type setting with food all around them. And Eden itself was a place of luxury, pleasure, delighting the senses. Um, and the word voluptuous is used as well. So the land was fat. The land was... Um, um, the land was just filled with everything that you needed to survive. And all these trees, like a forest area. So they were like forest people living off nature. Living off nature, right? And this is where these people were living for a long time, either thousands or millions of years. They were just living like that, surrounded by all the food that they needed. It was just like luxury, real nature they were living in. And... Um, this is what I'm finding out so far as I now beginning my search in North and South America. Notice as well that you hear a lot talked about even America, but remember that down in the islands is counted as being part of North America, at least Jamaica where I'm from. And you hear a lot more about America, but even Canada, as I just read to you from this historian, that they came and found um Newfoundland, so basically Canada, and it's the same people that they're found here. And I come up on what I'm looking at now, the Bayathuk Indians, and I'm looking into that now. But basically, they're finding black people here. And I remember, even I mean, I've come across when I didn't want to pay attention to them at first, different people giving their histories of people all over North America. And if we think of the border between Canada and the U.S. as being a more modern stuff like in i can't remember when the past century or two 200 years ago or whenever it was set up um that's just a more recent thing so when you think of black people being in the americas or in north and south america like even if just north america here all of this stuff even with the slavery because there was slavery in canada as well but they don't tell you that much so canada treats itself a little bit more quietly but there was slavery here as well and uh, so this border between Canada and the U.S. is just more recent stuff set up. Recent stuff in history. And um, the people would have just been free-flowing all throughout North, and, um, North, and North America, all throughout, between what is now called America and Canada. All throughout, they're bouncing back and forth living there. And so they were just the one people that had just scattered and spread all around until people started coming in later times and later times as time went on. And even Clyde Winters mentioned that the African came and came to America and even entered all the way up into Canada as well. So when Europeans... Now, I'm about his book here, but I'm going to buy it so I can look at that some more and bring it out some more. But even so now, when Europeans came and they found these swarthy or black people in Canada, they're basically letting you know they found these people all over America and Canada and all over North and South America. That's basically what history is letting us know. But this stuff isn't talked about as much, but of course, many people are talking about it now more and more. Until someone like me, who never cared about history, is now starting to look into stuff. So you see, you see how the world is changing and the lies are cracking. Even the lies of the Torah, as I'm uncovering the deception in the Torah lately. And the lies of history that many have been cracking. The whole world structure and the world power system that's run off deception and off a, a facade is all cracking slowly. And they fight down people from hundreds or thousands of years ago. But more and more people are alive now with the spreading around of more information that are starting to look into things. 
And so what you find is that truth might be taking a long time to do its work. But it's doing a steady work. And more and more the truth of the past and and the lies of the present are coming into focus. And no matter what they tell you about the wars that are breaking out here and there and the laws that are being passed and all kinds of stuff and the diseases and biological stuff that's whatever. The truth is that great shifts and changes are happening to bring a different world back into focus which was the original world when people could more enjoy living on this earth thanks for your time listening to my lesson